There is many reasons why people drink alcohol, be it to socialize, let loose, dull the pain, or an excuse to your mates when you want to sleep with somebody that normally slag you over. Whatever the reason, it's a tradition that stuck around for about 10,000 years or more, so it's obviously doing something right. But as you'd imagine seeing this video pop up on this channel, it's not just about some magic liquid that turns twos into blurry sixes, though it does that quite well, but more about the night as a whole. A night that would be great if it wasn't for the following. I get no any great drinking session's gotta start with pre-drinks at a designated house. Pre-drinks meaning the drinks you have before you go to the pub. We'll touch on why you do that in the next point. But pre-drinks at a particular house is a good way to assemble the team. The wolf pack, the squad, the dancing dick hunters, the pussy predators, the gagging gaggle, the tit-seeking arseware fanny fondlers, or whatever else name you've given to the collective that is your boozing brothers or session sisters. This is so you could all be in one place to plan out your evening of delightful debauchery or genital bastardry. And things are looking up because almost everyone says they're coming. Which in session terms means about 10% of people who said they're gonna go will actually actually turn up. Yes, this marks the first annoying point of the video. People telling you they're gonna go and then not turn up in the night. So instead of a mental session with the boys, you kick things off in a room of four people, quietly chatting all civilised and reserved. The only thing giving you hope is John Joe said he's bringing a couple of birds so they're potentially getting some fannies on the table. But then the cunt turns up and the first girl is mildly attractive, not drinking and she has a boyfriend and the second girl looks like a fucking toad. <laughs> So you may be wondering why you drink at home before heading out, given the whole point in going out to the pub or club is in fact to drink there. Well as some of you know or some of you will discover in the future, drinking in a pub or club is pretty damn expensive. The price of four shots of your chosen spirit in a pub or club is usually enough to buy you an entire bottle and an off license. The price of a regular pint is not fair off what you'd make in an hour at work, and the biggest dollop of load in your metaphorical tea is they charge you at the door just to come in and spend money on their overpriced pain medication. So that's where pre-drinks help. You drink your affordable drink at home until you feel like you've got a decent buzz going before hitting the clubs only needing to drink to maintain your Goldilocks zone of drunkenness. It's kind of the opposite of having a cheeky Bob Ross when you're about to bong somebody a fancy, so you don't get overexcited and leave their sleeve looking like a plasterer's radio. He drinks a whiskey drink, he drinks a vodka drink. Now we could easily talk about the arseholes in a pub that bump into you and spill half your expensive standard dropper all over your brightly coloured top. Or I could talk about the snooty bitches who force their way past you when you're queuing at the bar, in a manner that would only be justified if you kicked their dog and fucked their boyfriend better than they did. Or the pratty bastard barman who serves her first despite seeing what she did, because one day she might touch his willy. Or whatever else that would go through your mind when you've just enough brain cells to be barely considered sentient. But no, the biggest STD in the orgy that is your night out is in your own group. Or more specifically, particular drinkers in your group that through their actions make the night completely fucking insufferable. I'm talking about certain friends that don't go out to drink and have a laugh, but go out just to get completely and utterly wankered. I mean absolutely fucked drunk. The fuckers won't stop drinking until they have a coordination of a one year old and a temper of a badly raised chihuahua, leaving you to babysit the irresponsible arse for the evening. Or maybe you have one of them drunken attention whore friends, the ones that talk too much, which on its own is not that bad if everything coming out their mouth wasn't total bollocks. Yeah, they'll go through the usual stunts of interrupting everybody who's talking with something pointless to add, before moving on to some fabricated stories that paint them in a very positive of light and round the night off with a bit of self-loading by telling sad or tragic stories of his or her past, cause god forbid somebody takes their attention off them for five fucking minutes. But my least favourite of all is the friends that do the unspeakable on a night out. They go out to the pub and don't drink. Like what kind of fuckery is that? Why go out and not drink? We're all going to be drunk, probably saying and doing stupid things. The last fucking thing I want with a hangover is somebody with a clear memory telling me about all the stupid shit I said and did when I was on the sauce. Drink knows I don't want to remember all these things, that's why drink wipes my memory. So as a man that refuses to dance regardless of how fat or fired that beat is, and tend to dislike modern pop and dance music with an intensity that gives me energy, I spend a lot of time chatting with friends in the smoking area. The area in which you meet the worst, scummy, most disgusting people imaginable. Not the smokers, I'm talking about the casual smokers. The people who only smoke when they drink. The fuckers fly around the smoking area like vultures bumming cigarettes from people. Buy a goddamn pack of fags, you dirty, rotten, hippie tramps. Stop going around like glorified street beggars asking for handouts. I know you can afford it, and I know damn well it's not from any concern of your health. Because you've been down in points like you've been eating box for the last hour, and you'll be that same dribbly fucker sucking anything more viscous than bread out the end of a kebab later. So pull your head out of your arse, or just don't smoke. Stop going up to people, strangers, who bought their own asking for donations. You're easily worse than them cunts who swoop in and take the girl just when you went through the trouble of clubbing her. Fuckers. Speaking of bumming fags, I think it's about time that I enter the equation. I'm the right opinion, ready to take this over and talk about the power of alcohol, I guess. When you think about an evening with the right opinion, what comes into your mind? Warm shandy by the fireplace, some Beethoven, or maybe Schubert if I'm feeling a little bohemian, with a mounted mural of my visage on the dimly lit wall, gazing over the velvet carpets while I read some early period Nabokov. If you thought that, you thought fucking wrong.
Give me a 1.5 litre bottle of vodka and our night will be the greatest night ever, since the night before that is. To be honest, I'll jam to anything, apart from repetitive uh, techno, like the 10 minute songs that just go dun dun dun. They're shit, I'm sorry. I've been on the road to sobriety for a while due to examinations, but if you follow my Twitter, you'll know what charades I can get up to once I'm under the influence. When you're drunk, your personality becomes an exaggerated form of you sober. Given the fact that I'm a fairly affectionate person, when I'm intoxicated, I just end up telling people how much I love them. So plenty of tweets are just me reminding my followers how marvellous they are, which I'm sure they enjoy very much. I even once tried to integrate it with my YouTube channel. Upon uploading a new video, I tweeted out that for every retweet, I would do a shot of vodka. That night went just as you could imagine. The tweet received approximately 60 retweets, and the night finished on me, lost in my own city, using Google Maps with audio accompaniment to help me navigate home because I was too disoriented to look at Google Maps properly. I got through over half a bottle of vodka that night. I promised myself I wouldn't do that again. I'm not very good at keeping promises. When you have that commitment, you need an iron stomach. Vodka is not for the faint of heart. You could go for something softer, something lighter, something that's not going to hit you all at once. Vodka is certainly for someone who just wants to get the job done. It is important to consider the long-term health implications of an alcoholic attitude, which is why the right opinion here drinks only occasionally. But when he does, he makes the most of it. Sergeant Ducky outlined a lot of problems with nights out. I have the solution. Alcohol. Because you can't judge your night if you can't remember it.